Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey brother! Ben, have you ever heard the story about how they cast the girl who voiced Moana? Well, it is just an excellent story, truly worthy of a princess. After days and days of casting hundreds and hundreds of girls on the very last day, the very last person to come in is young Ali'i Cravalho and she nails it. She's so good, the directors themselves don't even need to meet her in person, they just watch the audition tape and know she is the one. Although, they do call her in for a fake follow-up audition, even though they know she's already got it. And they ask her to go through like a bunch of different emotions, like, can you give us sad? Could you give us happy? Could you give us even happier? Like, imagine we just told, imagine we told you just now that you got the part, how would, how would you react? And then they reveal that it's totally a hoax and she does have the part and then she gives like a truly emotional reaction and made me want to cry she calls her mom. I got cast as Moana. <laughs> <laughs> And it super makes me want to just go, like, go watch Moana, and like, I'll link to the video in the description. It's like really cool. But it's truly a Cinderella eh, story where this girl just basically came from nowhere and landed the role of a lifetime. I, am Moana. I mean, she had no other movie credits to her name, but since then has performed in live action shows. She's performed at the Oscar. She's been in TV shows. She's been in movies. She has a show coming out on Netflix. Exactly the future and success you'd hope for for a young girl who landed such a big role right out of the gate. But Cinderella story is indeed the right phrasing, because if this was instead a Snow White story, well, I'm afraid that would be a lot more disappointing. Today, we discuss the sad history of the voice actress of Snow White. Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. You guys all have that like one thing you really want to do for yourself, but for some reason just continuously put off. For many, this could be getting a better smile and straighter teeth. And thanks to Candid, it is easier and more comfortable and affordable than ever before. During uncertain times like these, things like going to the doctor's office can feel a little intimidating. But the good news is you can actually get this better smile all from the comfort of your own home and you'll work with the same orthodontist all the way through the entire process. Plus, the aligners are comfortable, removable, and completely invisible. And, and the average candid treatment plan is only six months long, but you will actually start seeing results way before the end. And it is all at a fraction of the cost of traditional braces. Oh yeah, I remember the six months I had braces. It was the <laughs> longest three years of my life. So start taking those steps towards a better smile today. Our viewers can get $75 off their Candid Starter Kit when they go to candidco.com slash SCB and use promo code SCB. Again, that is candidco.com slash SCB. Use promo code SCB to get $75 off your Candid Starter Kit. Link is in the description down below. It is really hard to describe just how successful and impactful the movie Snow White is and was. Like the way it has affected animation and Disney and movies at large is just huge. What is the most interesting thing you're doing in the studio now? Well, at the present time, we're making a feature length cartoon. A feature-length cartoon, yes. As I'm sure you're aware, or maybe you're not, because this was happening in the 1930s, Snow White was the first ever full-length animated movie, and it nearly bankrupt Disney. Walt had originally budgeted just $250,000 for the production of Snow White, but ended up spending over six times that amount. That is over $1.5 million. He literally had to mortgage his house to continue production. And six times the budget, that is crazy. That is so much. That's like going out to buy a Honda Accord and coming home with the Ferrari. Like, oh, oh, oh man, gosh, I... Really hope that was worth it. Fortunately for him though, it was worth it. The movie premiered on December 21st, 1937 and was met with a standing ovation from the crowd who were simply amazed. Walt Disney, who created these lovable characters, brings to motion pictures 
a new medium for a greater art. First feature length animated movie ever? And in color? And it had sound? What? And Disney has more than earned the money back. They might have spent 1.5 million on it, but since then, just at the box office, Snow White has raked in 418 million dollars. Which, yes, does include several re-releases in theaters over the decades. Disney used to do this thing where every 10 years they would re-release a movie back into theater so new generations could be introduced to their classics, and I have to say, it was like super effective. The greatest animated motion picture of all time is back in theaters. How do you do? But even so, you might be thinking, well, geez, 418 million doesn't sound like that much by today's standards. And you'd be right, $418 million, geez, what a failure. But alas, those numbers do not reflect today's standards. If indeed you adjust for inflation, that 418 turns into a two to 2.1 billion. Which means this movie that came out in 1937 is still in 2020 among the top 15 money-making American movies ever. And that's still just at the box office, not even including other revenue streams. By other revenue streams, I mean basically any other animated movie they made ever, because the money they made from Snow White, they used to buy 50 acres of land and build studios in Burbank, California, where they are still making movies from today. Like, Disney literally stands on the foundations built by Snow White. Which brings us to the voice actress of Snow White, because surely the woman who lent her voice to this character, brought her to life, launched everything went on to have a giant, booming, successful career, <laughs> right? Who wouldn't want the voice of Snow White in their movie? But who am I kidding? You all know her name. Say it with me now. <gasps> But no, of course you don't know it. Or I don't know, maybe if you did, I mean, high five. But either way, I don't totally blame you for not knowing because for one, the movie came out 83 years ago. And even if you're a big Disney fan, I'm betting chances are you haven't watched Snow White like super recently. But here's the thing. Even if you had, even if you watched it yesterday and even if you had like a crazy photographic memory or something, you still wouldn't know her name. Because watching the movie is not enough to learn her name because her name is not in the credits. Yeah, this is true. In fact, none of the voice actors are. As the opening credits roll, you'll notice that it only lists the production staff, the directors, the writers, the people who wrote the music. Yes, the people who sang the music, no. Okay, okay, but surely then in the post-credits, right? Wrong. There are no post-credits in the movie. It just ends with the book closing, and that's it. But don't you worry, guys. I can tell you that the voice actress of Snow White was a woman named Adriana Casalotti. Actually, do you want to know something funny? In a weird twist of fate, now that the movie is on Disney+, Plus, after the movie ends, there's this like series of silent black screens that just lists the like voice actors, the people who did the dubbing in other countries, which ironically means you could finish watching the English version of Snow White and then learn the voice actress for the Spanish, French, Portuguese, Dutch, and Italian versions of Snow White, but not the English one. But certainly her name must have appeared on like the posters of the advertising for the movie. Oh, no, not there either. Okay. The home video box art though, that must have, no, okay, nope, still not, nothing. Was she at the very least introduced to the audience at the premiere of the movie? Oh, hi ho, hi ho. She wasn't even invited. But, and I like this little part of the story, that doesn't mean she didn't attend. The voice of Prince Charming, Harry Stockwell, actually reached out to her before the premiere and thought it would be fun if they went to it together. Which they did, and they showed up to the ticket taker and were like, hey, we're Snow White and Prince Charming, like, we're the voices. The ticket taker was like, I don't care who you are, if you don't have a ticket, you're not getting in. So they waited till the ticket taker was looking the other way and then snuck in anyway. If you really want to find her name though, the only place I've seen, at least on Disney Plus, is if you scroll over a couple screens to the details section, you can see it right here, but even then it doesn't list which character she played. I mean, it's the top one, so you can probably guess, but like still. Now, as outrageous as all of this sounds, I will at least say that not listing the voice actors' names in the credits was the common practice back then. I'm not sure why that was the practice. It seems silly to me, but that was the case. But even so, this was like the first feature-length animated movie 
ever. So this is really the first time this skill was ever even being put on display in such a way. So if you ask me, it seems like they could have been writing the rules themselves. But on that note, here's another odd fact. Miss Adriana Casalotti didn't even know what she was performing for was a feature length movie. She was initially told it was for something a little bit longer than Disney's traditional animations, which at the time were 10 to 12 minutes. So she thought, I don't know, like 20 minutes or something. She had no idea it was a full movie until after she saw the finished product. But hey, at least she made almost a thousand dollars. According to Adriana herself in an interview, she was paid $20 a day, which ended up totaling 920 over the course of production, which just feels like bonkers low for the success of this movie. True, that number is not adjusted for inflation, but even when it is, you're only talking about $17,000. And that just doesn't feel like enough for this movie that changed everything. But here's the thing, even if that was just the common practice or common pay for voice actors back then, that's not even the kicker. The kicker is the blacklisting. Because Adriana's voice was so unique that Walt didn't want that voice appearing in other productions. When she was asked to be on the Jack Benny show, the most popular radio show in America at the time, Disney responded, I'm sorry, but that voice can't be used anywhere. I don't want to spoil the illusion of Snow White. Basically, hey, if people know you're the voice of Snow White, then when they see Snow White, they'll think of you and not Snow White. So I'm gonna need you to just like not be and other stuff. Cool? If you want to see a video about how Robin Williams eventually shatters this idea into a million pieces by playing the genie, you can check that out right here. Over there. I don't know. But, so yeah, Snow White was the last true role Adriana really ever got. She had a very minor role in The Wizard of Oz. Where art thou, Romeo? And other than that, she had another small role in It's a Wonderful Life, but really, that's it. Disney did eventually hire her back to perform as Snow White in costume for promotional purposes while they were on tour, but eventually she aged out of that. And they did hire her to re-record I'm Wishing for Snow White's Grotto in 1983 for the Disneyland attraction. But what's amazing to me is that through all of this, Adriana herself still seemed to channel all the grace of Snow White. She actually had a wishing well outside her house with Snow White's picture on it. And if you rang her doorbell, the sound you would hear was the song, I'm Wishing. And inside her home, sitting on her piano, was a signed photograph of Walt Disney and statues of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. In an interview she did in 1993, she admitted that she felt she probably deserved more money, but knew if she wanted it, she was going to have to ask for it. And if she asked for it, she wanted to do it in an amicable way. She thought the time to ask would probably be when Snow White was released for home video. And that actually did happen a year later in 1994, the same year she was on honored as a Disney legend, sort of the Hall of Fame of Disney. But whether or not Adriana asked for the money, I'm not sure. And either way, she died just two years later in 1996 at the age of 80. But like, oh my gosh, it's just such an unbelievable story. I mean, fast forward to today and it couldn't be more of a 180 on the situation. I mean, voice actors today are normally huge names to begin with. And if they're not, their stories are part of the promotion of the movie. Movie. That video of Ali'i Cravalho we showed earlier has over 5 million views on YouTube. To me, at the very least, what they could do is on Disney Plus just add one more black screen of credits to credit the original English voice actors. Like, that just can't be that hard, right? Also, just a request for everyone watching, just please pay people for their work. And if you're doing work for people for free, please ask for payment. Your time and work is valuable. And again, Disney, if you're watching or, you know, hearing about this on Twitter from people who watch this video, please just one black screen after the movie is finished that lists the actors. That's that's all we're asking for. Guys, thanks so much as always for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Disney action from us. If you want to see the Disney vault explained, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another Life Brother.